glory of the king is in the multitude of the people. It's beautiful. Hello guys, welcome to Alice Update Channel. This is a platform where the word of God is richly brought to your space. As you listen to this word, your life will never remain the same. You shall be transformed. You shall be inspired by the Holy Ghost. Every sickness shall be terminated. Thank you for watching. The glory of the king is in the multitude of the people. It's beautiful when we are many. But the men God wants to walk with are the men that have power in this world. And one of the signs is that they have won the battle of flesh. If you read Romans chapter 12 from verse 20, Paul was telling us how, how much of victory he has over flesh. And one of the ways Paul described this is that he can't be offended. When you offend Paul, you can't get him to be offended. He has mastered anger. He has mastered, but we have a generation where even in pastor's meeting, what we talk is malice and gossip. That's why Paul said you are babes, you are carnal. You have not come into the realm of gods. Because you can't walk kingdom. If you can't dominate flesh, you can't walk where immortals walk. It's not about the vision you have or the dream you had or what God told you. What is the degree to which you rule your flesh? Because if you don't tame the flesh, even if Jesus appears to you today, you will still sabotage it. The insurance you will have to keep walking in the realm of access is the degree to which you tame the flesh. The reason we call people to fasting, to prayers, is because we want to teach them how to master their flesh. So when you start praying, you discover that it becomes difficult for you. I'm telling you how we journey into the gate of revival. The guy can enjoy praise and dance and dance and sweat. But when you change from praise to prayer, after a while he starts dozing off. The question I always ask myself is, how can a man sleep where people are praying so loud? Because sleep has no regard for volume. It's a law over the flesh. And when sleep binds a man, if you like, put it in an engine room, he will sleep comfortably because he has no rule over the flesh. Have you not seen that even in a service like this, some people can be looking at somebody and forget themselves. All they are thinking of is how to meet that person after the service. They are slaves. We may be many, but there are few men that have mastered the flesh. So when God begins to rate men, one of the things he checks is, to what degree have you ruled your flesh? To what degree have you conquered your flesh? Because if you have not conquered your flesh, anything I give you is a waste. That's why I say, cast not holy things to the swine. They will go back to where they came from. The guy is still a slave of his appetite. I can't commit kingdom to him. He has not decimated flesh. He has not killed the powers of the flesh. God wants to give powers to a man to bring a city to her knees. But the least provocation, that man begins to render causes. So if God gives him that power, a man will kill all the children of God. There's no power over the flesh. That's why I say if a man is perfect, he has rule over his tongue. And in Matthew chapter 28 verse 43, he said, be a perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And in that kind of perfection, it has an implication on relational discipline. We are talking kingdom, organic reality. You know how to link with the Holy Spirit and for the Holy Ghost to mortify your flesh. So sometimes you will seek him in the closet. You will seek him in the secret. You will seek him everywhere because you don't want flesh to raise a ugly head. Because there's a journey you want to embark upon. There's a place I want to get to. Flesh is a limitation. Do you not know that even this preaching that we are preaching now can become the reason why flesh becomes strong? You come up, you exaggerate, you do all kinds of things to make people feel you are a certain man. God is wise. That's why the power of God is released when the gospel is simple. So that no man can take the glory and say, I'm a cherubim. That's why this happened. It is in the simplicity of the gospel that the power of God moves. Somebody becomes blessed. That's the reason the person falls. Because there's no victory over flesh. You can't ascend. You can't know revival. The flesh, we always cut it off. We always truncate it. Adam was in the midst of a revival. Every day, the Bible said the, the voice of God came. The voice of God came. But flesh had not been overcome. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. Even though God was coming every day. Every day. The man didn't win flesh. He truncated revival. 
When a man is growing in life, his first victory is in the flesh. That's why when men become mature in God, they are not moved. You can come and sing, everybody is falling, they are watching you. They saw the way you climb the stage. They want to see the way you come down. Because when you climb the stage, you were moving in fear, hoping that God will help you. Now that God has helped you, you want to come down from the stage. You now stand like this and say, I want to proclaim the blessings of God over you. The person who came like a lamb, because God is now moving, he's like this. So when they check you, they know you will not go far. They are not a move, but you are still a slave of flesh. You are still a slave. Sometimes when fathers are listening to you, your revelation may be cutting edge, but they are seeing your disposition. And the moment people start clapping, you begin to walk like this. You begin to proclaim. They now say, okay, this is a servant of flesh. They will wait and give you five years. After five years, they will look for you again. Is that boy still talking? When they see you after five years, they still check. A flesh is not dealt with, they will leave you. Because they know it's a wasted investment when you invest in a flesh. The flesh will always perish. It will always suffer corruption. So when God wants to entrust powers to a generation, he begins to check the parameters of the flesh. The day you call somebody's name and phone number, that day everything about you change. There's a way you now stand. <laughs> I'm showing you the things you watch out for. I know now you can pray for seven hours. But if you are not careful, seven hours prayer will be the reason why you will lose your place. Because once upon a time, when you were only able to pray for 20 minutes, you came to the place of prayer, trusting God to help you. Now you have become a prayer champion. So you will not even pray. You will be strolling at the back, waiting for when they will give you a microphone. Because everything they are doing now, they are joking. Until you climb the altar. Then they will see what prayer, what prayer is. You are a clanging simba. And the guy comes. Even when they give him the microphone, he believes himself so much. He will first of all key the atmosphere. And say, wait, wait. When we begin to pray, <laughs> all that show is for prayer. He wants to talk to God. Though. You want to talk to an eternal oracle an endless oracle an immortal that even cherubims can't stand before and then you are like this <laughs> when the cherubims that guard the presence show up in that meeting you are the first they will strike because they carry the jealousy of God as a body the reason we are small is because we have not one flesh people are praying and God is telling them go back there is a tyrant in your life that I must stay. That tyrant is that ancient enemy, the flesh. The flesh lost it against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And the two one to another. When the spirit of revival engulfs a generation, men will know God. The laws of God will be written on their heart. This is why men will begin to fear the Lord. Because you don't need to come and read to them the laws of Moses. The presence of God in itself will become a government over them. A generation is coming that will be baptized with the spirit of revival. That when we stand, when we walk, when we sit, the only thing that will motivate us will be intimacy with God. Because we will want more and more of him. Jesus said the zeal of my father's house have consumed me. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. The reason is because he came there all the time and he beheld God. And every time he looks upon his eternal majesty, there is something that happens on his inside because every time God shows up, he glows in different dimensions. So one time you see the mercy of God and you are broken down crying. Lord, I don't deserve this. How can you show so much mercy? But it is a knowledge you are interacting with. Another time, the love of God will engulf you. And that love of God will flow in your spirit like liquid. It will be so intense. It will trap you. It, see, the love of God is what will make you forget about the offense of men. Because there is something happening within you. It's so tangible that you cannot afford to keep malice with another man. 
you are overwhelmed. You are overwhelmed. He pours himself upon you like an ocean. And the point comes when the love of God becomes too heavy. Why in your room praying, you just find yourself crying. You start crying. You don't know what you're asking for. You are just overwhelmed. Because you have received something that men can give. It's take from you is the love of God many times ministry will fail men will write you off but you have found the love of God the Bible said it passed knowledge you can't teach it you can't communicate it it's a liquid fire that flows in your spirit nothing moves you anymore you have found the God that dwells in the deep dark to the Lord. Amen, 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 
the Lord. Say you are anathema maranatha. You have no place. He said for God commended his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. How can someone like me be an apostle? Me. Even me I disqualified myself many times. Mercy said no. Mercy prevailed over judgment. He said if he withheld not his son, his only son, but gave him freely for us. What did I do to deserve that love? We compete, we fight with ourselves because we don't know the love of God. He gave his all. 
if you encounter the love of Jesus then you are truly a revived man I want to pray for some people now we are callous He said, when we love one another, then we show to the world that we are his disciples. You have listened to this word. I know your life has been transformed. Vision shall not have hold over you. Every sickness is terminated. Yokes, generational cause is broken. It's shattered from your life. Thank you for sticking with us.